Our laboratory studies memory storage, and we study it in two systems. We study simple forms of memory in the snail aplysia and more complex forms of memory in the mouse. Uh, we like aplysia uh, not only because it's a beautiful animal, but beyond its beauty, we like it for its brains. Aplysia's nervous system has only 20,000 nerve cells. Moreover, many of these are large and uniquely identifiable. In this simple animal with a simple nervous system, we have focused on a very simple reflex as a model system for learning and memory. That's the gill withdrawal reflex, which is mediated in large part by a direct connection, a monosynaptic connection between the sensory neurons and the motor neurons of the reflex. This reflex can be modulated by learning, such as learn fear, by scaring the animal, by shocking its tail. You activate serotonergic modulatory neurons that act on the sensory neurons to strengthen the connections between the sensory neurons and the motor neurons. A single shock causes a transient strengthening. Repeated shocks cause transcription, leading to the growth of new synaptic connections. Stefan Kasabov, when he came to the lab, became interested in what are the mechanisms underlying growth. In the mammalian brain, that's mediated by neurotrophins, but no one had been able to find neurotrophins in invertebrates. Stefan proceeded to discover not only neuroplasty neurotrophin, but also the trap receptors. And that made him realize that not only could he analyze the growth process, but he could use the advantages of aplysia to get more detailed insights into how neurotrophins function. Neurotrophins are synthesized as larger proforms and later processed by furin proteases to release their mature forms, which bind truck receptors to produce neuronal and synaptic growth. But recent studies have shown that proneurotrophins are also secreted and bind a different P75 receptor that can lead to the opposite effects apoptosis, or synaptic depression. But how is the balance between mature and proneurotrophins regulated, and what are the exact physiological functions of proneurotrophins remains unclear. Unlike vertebrate neurotrophins, which are encoded by a single exon, we found that the plesio neurotrophin is encoded by multiple exons, at least two of which are alternatively spliced. Most strikingly, one of these is a short mini-exon that contains the furin processing site, and its splicing produces furin cleavable and uncleavable isoforms, which are differentially processed and secreted as mature or proneurotrophins in Hex cells. Imaging studies following the localization of the mature and proneurotrophin domains confirmed the differential processing and also revealed a very distinct expression and localization pattern of the neurotrophin splice isoforms in aplysia sensory neurons. These findings reveal an entirely new post-inscriptional mechanism for regulating the balance between mature and proneurotrophins in aplysia. They also give us a unique opportunity to analyze their separate functions in a way that is simply not possible in vertebrates. To explore the aplysia neurotrophin functions in synaptic plasticity, we used co-cultures of monosynaptically connected sensory and motor neurons from the gill withdrawal reflex and found that blocking the truck receptor in a sensory neuron impaired serotonin-induced facilitation. Conversely, boosting neurotrophin signaling by expressing the furin cleavable or uncleavable isoform significantly enhanced facilitation. Moreover, expressing the furin cleavable isoform was sufficient, even without serotonin, stimulation to produce both facilitation as well as growth of new synaptic varicosities. These results demonstrate a central role for the pleasure neurotrophin system in the control of synaptic plasticity and growth. Moreover, they reveal a primary function of the aplysia neurotrophin isoforms in modulating positive aspects of synaptic plasticity in aplysia. But why do we have alternative splice isoforms in aplysia and not in vertebrates? There are four related neurotrophins in vertebrates with similarly distinct properties as the neurotrophin isoforms we uncovered in aplysia. We propose that the aplysia neurotrophin splice isoforms are a functional equivalent to the multiple neurotrophins in vertebrates. However, unlike vertebrate neurotrophins, which produce both mature and proforms and interact with three different track receptors, the aplysia neurotrophin isoforms produce selectively only mature or proforms 
and interact with a single track receptor, making this a much easier system to analyze. As you can see, it's a privilege to have Stefan in the laboratory. His findings of neurotrophin and track receptors in Aplysia have not only allowed us to analyze the changes in structure that occur with memory storage, but also given us new insights into how the neurotrophin works. The fact that he can analyze uh, in a simpler way than it was possible before, the difference between the mature form and the proform allows us to get new insights into neurotrophin function in general.